Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this video, we're gonna have a look at how we create our own version of these slide revealers that you can get from Brett FX. But we're gonna be doing our version completely in Final Cut Pro. So this is a kind of DIY version of this plugin. We'll be using only the built-in tools inside Final Cut Pro. So you'll be able to see how you can create your own version of this very cool plugin right inside Final Cut Pro, and then compare it to the professional version, which you can find on BrettFX's website. So we're gonna jump into Final Cut Pro here, and you can see in here, this kind of simplified version of the slide revealers using different layers, different kind of transitions within Final Cut Pro. And this is what we're gonna be working on creating. So how to split the video, how to add the background, add this kind of drop shadow effect, and then animate on our type and emojis. So we'll start with a brand new timeline. We'll go to File, New, and Project. And I'm gonna use some custom settings here. We're gonna set up a 1080p HD project, 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second. And we'll click OK here. And actually I forgot to rename it, so I'm just gonna click up here. We'll call this surf day revealer and basically all we need is this kind of selection of video from up here that we'll drag down to our timeline so i'm going to do shift and z just to get this clip to fit the timeline so the first thing we need to do is kind of create the the point at which our clip is going to split so to do that i'm going to use a draw mask and we're going to do the draw mask on this one layer and then we're going to use that same draw mask to create the, the reverse of that. So this is quite a neat trick and useful if you want to create these kind of split animations in Final Cut Pro. So we're going to come across to our effects on the right hand side. I'm going to scroll down to my masks here and we're going to grab the draw mask, drag this onto our clip. So if you've not used a draw mask before, basically it allows you to draw point to point around an object to create some transparency. And I wanna catch the edges of my clip here. So I'm just gonna zoom out to 100% here so I can catch the edges of my clip. So you can see it says click to add a control point. So basically I wanna start my control points around about here and we can add a little curve in here as well to make this a bit more interesting. So I'm just clicking and holding to make that curve. And then I'm gonna click away from the edge there and around the bottom. So this is gonna be the area that I select for the, the bottom of my clip. And I'm just gonna work on these curves a little bit, get them flowing nicely, and make sure they're nice and smooth. And obviously we can do a straight line as well, so just one dot on the left and one dot on the right. But this curve will look quite nice. So then I'm gonna duplicate on my layer. So I'm gonna hold down the Option key, and we will drag up. And then to create the reverse of this, all I need to do simply is to click on my control points, now, if you clicked away from your layers or control points at any point in time, you can access this again. So I'm just gonna click away from those control points so they disappear up in my inspector. You can see when I click away from a clip and then click back on, the control points may not necessarily be selected. So if I come up to my inspector, which you can bring up by going to Window, Showing Workspace and Inspector, if you don't see it, we're in the Video tab here, and all I need to do is highlight my draw mask, and that will allow me to come back in to edit the draw mask. So we're on the topmost layer here, and I'm just gonna pull these two points from the bottom all the way up. So you can see now, if I highlight this clip and just tap V, the top clip is this, and the bottom clip is this bottom section here. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our video playing, and then at some point, around about here is nice, we're gonna have these clips move apart. So I'm gonna set some keyframes for my bottom clip first of all, and you can do this either with the transform controls or using the transform options up in the inspector. We'll do the transform button here first. So the little blue square at the bottom left of our video. And basically what I wanna do is add a keyframe. So we'll click the keyframe button up here on the top left. And I'm gonna move forward a little bit. Okay, and by this point, we want our video to have moved down. So I'm gonna drag this, drag it down, make sure it stays aligned to the center. So on that yellow line, snapping nicely there, and I'll bring that down. And then I'm gonna right click on this layer and just go to show video animation. You can see the two points of animation there. I just wanna make sure that when I go to my topmost clip, I'm matching the points of those keyframes. So again, I'm gonna come back to the beginning here. We'll snap to those first keyframes. I've got my topmost layer selected and I can this time, come across to my transform options in the inspector, and we're modifying the position. So I'm gonna click on the position. I'll come ahead in time to the same point, and this time I'm gonna increase the Y position and bring that up, making enough space for the text to appear there. So we've modified both of these now. 
So if we come back, you can see this is going to play through and then split apart at that point in time. Super nice. The next step is to add our background in there. So you can see now when these split apart, we need to have our background ready and in place there. Now normally I'm adding videos above the main storyline, which is where this first clip is, but we can also add videos behind. So I'm going to come to my titles and generators. We'll scroll down to textures and we can pick out a texture from here. So you can see we've got a whole variety of textures that we can use. And I'm going to add the, the pinstripes texture here. We'll drag this down to our timeline and I'm going to just do shift and Z and stretch this out so it fills that whole timeline. So you can see now this is going to fit nicely behind that video as this opens up. Perfect backdrop for our text. So now we've got our texture in the background. I want to add the lines in here on the edge of our split. So in order to do that, we're actually going to use another BrettFX plugin. So I'm going to come back to just before they split. So we'll play this. And basically, I want my lines to fade in around about here. So I'm going to select here, and I'm going to grab the blade tool. And we're just going to slice it here and here. And essentially, the line is going to fade on here. So on my second part of the clip here, I'm going to come to my BrettFX Power Tools. And this is a free part of the BrettFX Power Tools. We're going to add the Outline tool here. And you can see it's going to add a nice outline to both the top and bottom here. So you can see now when we play this through, we get our outline pop on, a little jumpily, and then those split apart. So I'm going to zoom in here. We're just going to add a fade transition here. So I'm going to do Command and T. Fade is my default transition. We'll shorten this down and we'll do the same here. It's just going to fade in that line. So you can see now we play this through, the line fades in quickly, and then the clip separates. So already we have a nice little animation there. We can stretch out that fade if we want to, just to ease the transition a little bit more. Nice. So now we want to add our text in here. So to add my type in, I'm basically going to use from my titles up here, I'm going to use the build in out options and we're going to scroll up and we're using the, the custom option here, which allows us to do a little bit of text animation as well. So we'll drop this on here and I want to come to when we have these broken apart and it's roughly in this area where the text is going to start to animate on. We can play around with the position of that. So here I'm just basically going to type in my text. So come up to the inspector. And we'll go for Helvetica bold. We're going to increase the type size. Just get it to fit nicely in that section. And we'll just rotate it here in the type options as well, just to get it to fit nicely in that spot. So basically we have our type popping up there and I want to get that to animate on. So here in our custom generator, we can go to the titles and basically here we can have an in position and in opacity and that's basically going to set where this animation starts. So I'm going to come back to the beginning here and I'm going to set my in position across here and my in opacity to zero. And so now you'll see my text is going to animate on in that space. So you you get a nice animation and we can do it by line as well. So at the moment we're animating each character on, but if we animate each line on, then you can see we get this nice animation and we can come in and modify our rotation a little bit more, get it working nicely. And that's looking pretty good. We can also, again, from the free BrettFX uh, tools here, I'm just going to change the color of this. We'll change the face color, so the color of our type. Let's go for some summary colors here. We'll go for a nice, rich summary yellow. And then I'm going to come to my extrude. We'll drag this on and drop that on there. And we can change the angle. Now, this is sometimes a bit hard to grab. We can change the angle of our 3D type. So I'm just going to play with that and move it around until I'm happy with where it's at, have it 
popping across to the left there. And so now you can see we're going to get this. So we've got a bit of 3D in there. We've got our type animating on, and we've got our split here that's looking pretty cool. So I'm going to bring on another custom animation a little bit later down the line. Do Shift and Z. So basically, we're going to have our split, our text animate on, and then we're going to have a couple of little surfer emojis popping up. So I'm going to select my type up here, and to bring up my emojis, I'm going to do Control, Command, and the spacebar. And now we can either search for some surfers, or I've already got them up here. I'm going to double click. It's going to add in a couple of surfers here. And then we can move this across to the right, increase the size. And we can animate this as well. So we're still using that custom type generator. So now I can change my in position here. We'll come across to the right. I'm going to change my in position up and across a bit. And my in opacity can go down as well. So now when we play this through, we'll split, our text will come on, and then we'll have these two little surfers popping on as well. And we can stretch this out at the end as well. Once we're at the end, um, we can also have an out animation too. So actually, if we change the out position here, these options at the bottom of our surfers, I'm just going to have our surfers fade out. So you can see they're going to fade out one by one, the opacity will drop, and then I will have surfing vacation fade out as well. Let's play this through. We have our split happening, we animate on, we hold for a little bit, and then fade out. So what we can also do, once our type has disappeared, is we can then close up our gap here. So if I grab the blade tool, I'm going to split this here and here. Okay, so I'm going to have my gap close and then we'll fade out the, the line and go back to just the video. Okay, so in order to do that, I just use B and A to jump between the blade and the selection tool. I'm going to open up my video animation here. Okay, so essentially, I want to reverse the position animation for this first line. So under position here, I'm going to lock it in position here. We'll come ahead a little bit. And then for position, I'm just going to type in zero, which is going to bring that bottom line back to the middle. Okay. And I need to reset the position for this next clip. So I'm just going to come into this clip that I've separated and we'll just reset the parameters. Okay, so now if we play this through and we'll fade out our type and surface before the transition point here. So again, for this next one, I'm gonna reset the parameters for this last clip and then right click here. We'll go to video animation I'm going to go to my position animation, lock it in position there, come ahead in time, type in a zero, and then these will move together. We need to take our surfer back a bit there. And then I'm gonna remove from that last clip the outline and I'm going to remove the outline from here as well. And then using Command and T, once those outlines are removed from the, the end slice clip, we can add that transition in there. So basically this is going to play out now and then fade out. So we'll just play this through from the beginning. So we've got our own slightly simplified version of the BrettFX slide revealers there. And essentially what you can see here is a nice way in which we can create these animations right inside Final Cut Pro, a slightly simplified version of the BrettFX version. If you wanted to create your own plugin like this, then you'd really want to do it 
in Apple Motion, but sometimes kind of working with the tools that you already know how to use is useful. So you can see if we jump back to the little preview for the slide revealers here, we're getting a lot of detail in that animation that we haven't necessarily built into our own animation. So things like the subtle drop shadows, and then also these other animated elements, which are really nice to be able to include easily when you're using the plugin. But hopefully this will give you a nice overview of the different ways you can think about making these. The one thing we haven't done is actually modified like our little bit of drop shadow in this background area here. So the way that we can do this is once we have our slide revealers on, then we can come to all video and audio. I'm just gonna type in drop in the search down here. We'll grab our drop shadow and you can see now we can modify the location of that drop shadow so that it's in the, the background there. We can soften it off. And then also in the inspector, give it a bit of perspective as well. And that will allow us to create the, the drop shadow there. So you can see we can do that on the bottom as well. This time we need to pull it up. We'll give this some perspective too. And then soften that. So you can see we can quite quickly get a nice little bit of drop shadow effect there. It's going to help that background to, to stand out nicely. So be sure to check out my review of the Slide Revealers plugin from BrettFX, but also if you have any questions about this technique or other techniques in Final Cut Pro, then please do leave a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.